Omega, the 47th main range Doctor Who Big Finish release, first released in four parts across CD and download on the 27th of August 2003. This is also the first entry in the Classic Villains trilogy, which would continue through Davros and Master. It was also written by Nev Fountain. Now, the Doctor finds himself aboard a spaceship run by the tourist company Jolly Chronolides, and they're exploring an area of space known as the Sector of Forgotten Souls. This is supposedly the area where the famous Time Lord Omega eventually disappeared. And while there, he encounters a tour guide named Sensia, played by Carol Caroline Monroe, an author named Professor Erectus, voiced by Patrick Duggan, uh, two actors named Darland and Tarpoff, played by Hugo Myatt and Conrad Westmus, and two elderly tourists named Maven and Glinda, played by Faith Kent and Anita Elias. However, while exploring the sector, people end up getting lost, people end up going missing, and the Doctor eventually finds himself mind to mind with Omega himself, voiced by Ian Collier. And the Sector of Forgotten Souls is apparently heavy in psionic radiation, which may have attributed to Omega's madness. Now, in terms of what I think of Omega as a character, with the recent addition back to the universe of the Sea Devils in last year's Legend of the Sea Devils, Omega is another villain that I personally think is due to come back in Doctor Who. I mean, while I think he would be rather difficult to do, if they're willing to put in the effort, I would love to see Omega back in a story. I mean, I don't think it's going to happen for a while. I mean, while we haven't had confirmation of it yet, I think everyone is pretty... Well, everyone seems to have adopted the idea that when Neil Patrick Harris comes in to Doctor Who later this year in the specials, he's going to be playing the Celestial Toymaker. So that, I think, is the next big Finnish classic edition. No, sorry, sorry, I messed up there. The next kind of classic villain added back into Doctor Who. Well, at least that's what we presume at the moment. But I think Omega is due a comeback. However, if they do decide to bring Omega back... I either hope they'll go back to using the original design from the 70s or come up with a new design because while I'm sh while I know that the program had to kind of evolve as time went on I personally am not that big a fan of the design used in the 80s now for those who don't know or somehow may have missed it like a lot of kind of classic Doctor Who monsters or villains, Omega was probably sparse in the original series. He only actually appeared twice in classic Doctor Who. Once in 1973's uh, The Three Doctors, and then it t around over ten years later he appeared in the story Arc of Infinity. Now, while I do like The Three Doctors, I have to admit, I think I did say in my review of it, which I may put up somewhere, that Arc of Infinity I felt was a little disappointing. And while it wasn't heavily about that, I wasn't sure about the redesign they did for Omega. I mean, I know they had to develop as any TV show has to do, but I do kind of prefer the design from the 70s. Like, the huge, towering, tall gold mask, that to me worked a lot better. I mean, no offense to the people who made the one from the 80s, but I don't... But yeah, that's just my opinion. I just think the one from the 70s was more in line with what I expected of Omega. So... If they do bring Omega back in the new series, I do hope they go for either a design similar to the one from the 70s or a whole new design. But at the same time, anyway, this, the story does also go into more of okay, what happened with Omega, why he disappeared, and arguments he had with his uh, kind of second-in-command, Van der Kirian. Now, the two actors, Darland and Tarpov, they're mainly... I think they work for Jolly Cronulla Days, and while Tarpoff is mainly just doing this as a side gig just to put himself through college, Darland is actually rather passionate about it, and actually wants to try and do good with it. But then things also end up getting rather complicated with this story, and I do I mean that's both a plus and also a slight negative, as the story does get a little complicated with it being revealed that Sensha is also the lover of Omega, and 
He either wants to use that to bring himself back from his antimatter universe into our universe, or he wants to take her back to his universe and make her his bride. It gets a little confusing. But then, I, I, while I think the story is a little bit confusing, with Omega that does kind of fit. And at the same time, it does lead to one moment at the very end of the story that I will admit, I do kind of find, I, I chuckled at, I, I smirked, which is that as we get to the end of the story and Omega has kind of been defeated, it's revealed that the two elderly tourists, Maven and Glinda, they weren't actually as, while well, most of the story they are kind of shown to be rather bumbling or the like, saying, oh, well, no, we didn't like all that history stuff, but they did have a marvellous tea shop, and all that, so it's revealed that that's all be an act. Maven is actually a member of the Celestial Preservation Agency, and Glenda is actually her TARDIS, which, no, no, that's kind of fun. And Maven says to the Doctor that she is from the Celestial Preservation Agency, and they've kind of been sent to kind of preserve history and make sure that everything goes as it's supposed to go, to which the Doctor says to her, well, I hope that you can at least preserve some of the memory of Omega. And she goes to him, oh no, 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 we didn't come here because of Omega. What? No, 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 we came here because of you. Like, really? Yes, you are seen as a hero in the far future, and we need to kind of preserve that image. We want you to tell your version of the stories and your version of events. And just at the very end of the story goes, oh, uh, one last thing. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> just, I don't know. That, that to me, works. Just somebody who's shown to be bumbling throughout the entire story, but then is shown to be kind of a fangirl of the Doctor. I don't know. I just find that entertaining. So, Omega, as a big finished story, I have to admit, it's not my favourite. I, I, I will admit, it does what it does, and it does it very well. I just can prefer other big finished stories to this one. But at the same time, with the villain of Omega... It, it's hard, really, to screw up a story involving Omega, and I do hope that at some point with Doctor Who on TV in the future, they can see fit to bring Omega back. I mean, it might be tricky, but I believe they can do it. Anyway, the next big finish story I'll be doing is the Classic Villains Trilogy Part 2, Davros. What do I think of that? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Till next time, see ya.